Today on Locked on Rockies, taking a look at the state of positions for the Colorado Rockies, bouncing around each of the positions here and there throughout spring training, figuring out what we need to know about each one. And we start with a really, really important position, especially for the Rockies here at third base. What do the Rockies do with Ryan McMahon? What do the Rockies do with Aileris Montero? What is the state? of third base for the Colorado Rockies. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 20th day of February in the year 2023. I am your Rockies fan extraordinaire, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team each and every single day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, guess what? You are in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every single day. That's right, folks. Back in action five days a week here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. You can join us free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can also join us in the Locked On Rockies live chat on YouTube, just like Nicholas Delvo and Brandon Kramer. Our Eric Harper just pops in as well. Join us. Talk Rockies baseball. It's right around the corner. And folks, the big first workout was today, the official workout. I know they've all been down there. I know there's a group workout, I think is what it was called today. It is getting closer and closer spring training for the Colorado Rockies. And speaking of spring training, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start taking a look at the impact that spring is going to have on one of the most interesting positions that the Rockies have is third at third base. The Rockies are facing uh, an, a, an instance where they have a player that the organization fans and everyone are pretty high on. I would say most people, I think Ryan McMahon is still considered to be one of the top Rockies players. And statistically last year, he was one of the top uh, players for the Rockies. He had one of the highest wars on the team. According to baseball reference, he still, and again, the guy was a gold glove finalist, even in a down year, what I think all of us would consider a down year for him defensively. And they also have what is part of the future of the Colorado Rockies, or at least what the mindset of the Rockies was with their last GM. The interesting situation here, and I don't know, one thing I've kind of been stewing on with Aylaris Montero is, is he a player we're going to see a big shift between Bill Schmidt and Jeff Breidich? Is the philosophy, the mindset, the perception, the idea of Montero the same between both of them? Mind you, Montero was acquired when Breidich was still the GM. Ryan McMahon and every I'm pretty positive the Ryan McMahon uh, situation is uh, when did I, I need to double check when he signed that extension. I believe he signed that. Uh, extension under Bill Schmidt. I'm not sure. I'm going to do a, uh, yeah. Uh, He signed an extension in uh, March of last year, almost a year ago. So that would be uh, under Breidich's role. And and, and Schmidt also comments, I'm sorry, under Schmidt's role. And so how, how aligned are the Rockies there? Was was Montero a bar, was Montero a bigger piece and McMahon more of a filler? And then Montero would you know this season rolls around. If Breidich was in charge, if you're handling the Nair, the Nolan Arenado trade, then you're thinking, okay, then Montero's going to fill in for after McMahon's just a little bit. It, that that might be a question to start asking. The confidence level is high in Ryan McMahon. But on the and 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 he's been here and he's proven it and he's been a Rocky for a bit again and in the extension, the Rockies just don't haven't cleared a path for Montero, who's considered to be one of their top prospects and one of their most interesting pieces this year, and that includes with the McMahon extension last year. What are the Rockies going to do if Aloris Montero isn't playing third base? What is the point of Aloris Montero? What what, are, what is your goal with him? He's taking reps at third base now. He's taking reps at first base. That gets in the way of other things. So do the Rockies 
really have a clear idea of what they want out of Valeris Montero, or is the idea that they're banking on the other prospects and Montero is going to fill more of a backup role behind Ryan McMahon? Or are the Rockies going to pursue trades for maybe McMahon or maybe Brendan Rodgers? Let's let's take a look and, 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 and kind of bring that all together. Are the Rockies, do the Rockies have a plan for A. Luis Montero? I'm sure they do. At least they have to. Here's the thing with A. Luis Montero. You cannot do nothing with him. He cannot go back into the minors. He cannot, he has to be a contributor, a contributor for the Rockies, or you need to get out and in front and tell us why he's not. Because if he's not, why is Nolan Arenado not our shorts or not our third baseman still? Montero has to be discussed. I am very I, I don't know. There's just been this weird thing that I, I feel like I am the locked on Rockies is is the only place talking a ton Montero. I'm sure other places are. I know other places are talking Montero. I know that's there. But the national perception we're, we we've heard Tovar. We see the Rockies immediately promoting Zach Veen. Where is the arrival of Ailerice Montero for the Colorado Rockies needs to be heralded as something big. Maybe he needs to prove it first, but the Rockies have shown before that they trust, if they trust enough in prospects, if they believe enough in prospects, that if you hand them the keys, they're going to have success. That's what they're trying to do with Ezekiel Tovar this year. So why are the Rockies not going with Montero? It's because Ryan McMahon, I mean, one reason is because Ryan McMahon is a pretty darn good third baseman. And as much as we want more from his offense, the dude is elite at defense at third base. It, to go from Nolan Arenado to Ryan McMahon is, I mean, that's, that's a, uh, there's a whole other side to it, but it's pretty amazing. At least the Rockies can get still, uh, are still getting gold glove caliber defense at third base after they traded away a once in a generation third baseman. That's an impressive feat from Ryan McMahon. And I'm someone that actually is high on Ryan McMahon. I think he's I think he still has the potential to break out for a couple more seasons. I don't think he's necessarily going to go down as an all-time amazing great or whatever, but I still think Ryan McMahon has confidence, has potential, and when he is locked in, he's pretty darn good. I mean, he's very solid and I've kind of been harsh on McMahon, I think throughout the season and the offseason, but when you look at him on the Rockies and comparing him to the other players on the Rockies, yes, in the big picture of things that, that it changes things, but at least for someone who contributed and did things for the Rockies, he was a positive asset for the team last year. His line last year for the Rockies, 3.1 war, 130 hits, 20 home runs, 246 batting average, 67 runs, 67 RBIs, uh, seven stolen bases, an OBP of 327, 414 uh, slugging, OPS is 741, and an OPS plus of 98. That is from baseball reference. Uh, he's been a career positive player. He's almost he almost is a 10 career war player. He's never really he, he Ryan McMahon is not a detriment to the Rockies. He's just frustrating in the sense that I think he's someone that maybe is just he's never going to be elite. And third base, we were used to elite. That's one tough thing for McMahon. But he's shown enough that you got to go, that you are that you trust Ryan McMahon. And, of course, he is your starting third baseman. That was the immediate plan after. We'll dive into the live chat. Uh, we'll kind of uh, continue this discussion. But currently the state of the position, at least one factor, is a little hazy for the Rockies because they have to decide what they want to do with a couple of players that they have a lot of commitment to. I think the big kind of focus I wanted you to take away from that first part there is look at how much is at stake with both of these players in terms of the commitment the Rockies have, the performance, and all of these things. It's a pretty tough decision for the Rockies, but it's also one you got to start making. And, of course, having depth and off days, DH, all that stuff's going to help. But is Ryan McMahon or A. Larice Montero as your DH really what you're hoping for out of both of those players? I don't think so. 
Let's talk more about the state of third base. We'll talk more about that, uh, about the uh, Montero and McMahon matchup there and what the Rockies are uh, are going for coming up here in segment number two. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is already been your home for the first part of the NBA season, the All-Star game. And now guess what? They got you covered all throughout the second half of the season. They even got you covered for all sorts of sports and they got future bets for baseball. That's right. You can go check out America's number one sports book, FanDuel. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel because no customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. If you're interested, we did a whole episode about the current line that FanDuel has set for the Rockies on their over under on their win total. You can go and check that out as well. I believe it was at 65 and a half for the Rockies. You can see that in a whole lot more MLB future bets at the FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss on your chance at no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Talking Rockies, we're talking third base here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. You can go make Locked On MLB prospects your second listen of the day, or you can check out the Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and now. The Locked on Buffs podcast. Spoiler, I'm a little bit more of a CSU guy because that's where my brother went. I didn't go to any of the Colorado schools, but, you know, your brother went there more of a more of a Rams guy if I have to uh, uh, highlight that. But, uh, yeah, go check out Locked on Buffs as well. Of course, Coach Prime up in Boulder. I'm sure uh, plenty of you have your eyes on that. All right, uh, let's talk more third base let's dive into the live chat here uh elmo celiac says the best solution for third base would have never been get rid of Varonado. yeah <laughs> uh yeah i agree again there's nothing about right now with the rockies have at third base that makes me feel better than having nolan arenado on my team I, I simply put i would take nolan arenado over ryan over the package of ryan mcmahon and aileris montero that the rockies have now i would take nolan arenado over both of those players now is the Rockies' to time to make a decision because, really, the prospect involved in the most infamous trade of all time, and I know he's not the only one, but the big name. He, Montero was the name. Out of everything that the Rockies got and, and everything that was in the Arenado trade, Montero was the centerpiece. So it's time to show it. At some point this season, Montero needs to be playing every single day. And if he's not playing every single day, maybe he's not playing every single day because he had chances and he's struggling. But I'm just saying, we need to see consistency and, and, and him in the lineup consistently. If this prospect is supposed to be as highly regarded as we are supposed to think, if he is valuable enough that you trade away Nolan Arenado, we have to see it. He's torn up the minor leagues. He's had an, a pretty good showing with the Rockies last year. Wasn't perfect, but he still he may, he was he was not overwhelmed by the major league game. It was not passing him over. He was not outmatched. But where are you going to put him? Because I'm sorry, unless you're doing. I mean, this is how it's going to shake out. But. For the Rockies to be the in the best situation, shouldn't McMahon and Montero be in the lineup? But how do you get them both in the lineup? They both play the same position. Are you gonna? This leads to the Rockies. I think are gonna have to make a move. I don't think it's a guaranteed safe bet that Ryan McMahon and honestly, maybe more likely Brendan Rodgers finishes the season with the Rockies. Because how would you feel, Rockies fans? Seriously, if Aileris Montero doesn't play a lot this year, 
how what are we supposed how are we supposed to feel? What are we supposed to do with that? Now the Rockies brought him up. They played him last year. The, the the idea, and I'm sure the plan is to play him a lot, but let's just say the season shakes out and Montero isn't playing. Not be, and, and let's again say it's not because he's bad or he's underperforming. It, maybe it's just, again, McMahon's there. And then you keep every. How do you get Aileris Montero in the lineup outside of being a, and if it is a DH, that changes other things for other players. What are you doing with Charlie Blackman? What are you doing with Chris Bryant? What are you doing with your other prospects? So while the Rockies have a certified starter at third base in Ryan McMahon, they also have this prospect that has a lot surrounding it. So when you really think about it, is there really a world that Ryan McMahon, Aileris Montero, and Brendan Rodgers all fit into the equation and on the team at the same time outside of Montero just taking the backup role behind McMahon for, for depth and health with Montero getting a lot of time at DH. That's a question. It's something that hasn't become more clear throughout this offseason. And it's a question that we have to ask and something to watch the entirety of the of spring training. So there will be teams interested in both Ryan McMahon and Brendan Rodgers. Will the Rockies pull the trigger on something like that? Would the Rocky, is that really the mindset that the Rockies have? Because Montero can't sit and play first base when Talia is supposed to be the first baseman of the future. When you talk about him being Todd Helton. Montero hasn't played, to my knowledge, his outfield hasn't really been explored too much. I'm sure he might have gotten a little right field or something in there. But isn't the point of Montero, isn't the point of acquiring Montero for a player like Arenado for him to be the one to take the mantle? The Ryan McMahon extension gets in the way of that. And the fact that Ryan McMahon is not a detriment to your team. He's good. Ryan McMahon is a starting third baseman. Absolutely. Ryan McMahon would start on base. I mean, there are teams with better third baseman. Yes. But I'm just saying Ryan McMahon is a starting third baseman. Without a doubt. And he's a third baseman that could help a team on a playoff run. Absolutely. He's someone that comes with team control. You trade for Rodgers, he might not sign. There's the there's that, there's arbitration, there's this and that. It would be it would make more sense for the Rockies to build around Rodgers and Montero than it would McMahon, wouldn't it? If that's the idea and the perception, but we have to ask ourselves truly, what is the Rockies mindset when it comes to Montero? Because the guy who made the trade isn't there anymore. And the guy that took over extended a guy that was in the way of this prospect. It is not a good look if Montero does not play. Nolan Jones as listed uh, as well. I believe he's a third baseman. I think he might be more of the outfield, but I believe he can also play third base. So where do you play him? Where do you where do you get these guys on the field? Because I can tell you this: if it's April and Montero doesn't have 125 game, uh, at, not games <laughs> at bats, I will be upset. Luxe says Montero's a better DH. I think that's fine. I, I if Montero's going to be a DH, if he's going to be a great DH, that's cool. But it's not trade Nolan Arenado for. It's not the mindset. There's just no possible way that the Rockies are sitting there and saying, the guy we traded Nolan Arenado for, the big piece of the Nolan Arenado trade, we're hoping to just be our dominant DH. I don't think that's the way the Rockies are handling this. Could it be? It could be. It's just interesting 
to re-sign <laughs> Ryan McMahon. And let's take a quick look at his pro- uh, projections. Uh, Montero doesn't have projections up from baseball reference, um, but McMahon does. And let's take a look at him here. Uh, let's see. 66 runs off 122 hits, 25 doubles, three triples, 19 home runs, 68 RBIs, six stolen bases. Uh, let's see. Uh, 53 walks, 142 strikeouts, 245 batting average, 322 OBP, slugging a 419, an OPS of 714. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. The, um, I don't know. They, they don't have the uh, on, on base plus. So, when you boil it down, they're just projecting him to basically have essentially the same year as this year. Similar batting average, similar OBP, similar slugging, similar OPS. Uh, in fact, the same OPS, a uh, similar amount of, uh, let's see, how many strikeouts did he have this year? Uh, it's a little less strikeouts they're projecting. That would be nice. Um, similar walks. Uh, less walks, though, I believes they're going to take less walks and uh, similar RBI uh, and similar home runs. OK, that's fine. But is it enough? Is it enough to not let Montero play? Because what if Montero's on a tear? What if what if Montero gets, a, you know, I because it could happen just. It's, uh, it's, it's just say it's fatigue. Just say it's whatever, you know? And Montero gets a seven day stint. McMahon's going to be back. It's fine. It's, cr- it says, cr- you know, whatever cramps, weird cramp. Give him the week. It's baseball. That stuff happens all the time. And Montero's on a tear. As Locked On MLB Prospects puts in the chat right here, when in doubt, play the prospect. Right? Like, I I mean, it's so tough because you sit here, uh, when you you, you sit here and you you can't really argue too much against, the case against Ryan McMahon is the fact that he's going up against someone the Rockies drastically altered their future and traded for. On the flip side, though, Montero has to prove it because Montero's going up against, like we said, a good starting third baseman in Major League Baseball. That's, I mean, Montero has to be ready to show that his impact is on the Rockies and their their performance on the field is going to be more than Ryan McMahon. And that's not an easy thing to do because McMahon has been one of the Rockies' top uh, producers. Yes, again, in the grand scheme of baseball players and in all things, Yes, Ryan McMahon wasn't great, but Ryan McMahon was a positive contributor to the Rockies, something the Rockies didn't have a ton of last year, and it's something that uh, McMahon has done his entire career. So it's time for Montero as well. If we haven't seen the real Aylaris Montero like he was telling us last year, it's time to show us who the real Aylaris Montero is at spring training and at the start of the season. It's time to start throw, hitting the ball out of the yard, and it's time to start being the power bat and the and and the guy that we hope him to be. We want you to. Be, I want him to be. He excite Montero excites me. He is the one when I think about it, it's just like yes, that's the type of guy I want. I want a dude that is confident in his abilities and just comes and hits nukes at Coors Field. That's that's what I want, and I believe in Montero to do that. We'll see. Uh, we'll talk more. We'll dive into the live chat here, and uh, we will uh, kind of wind th- wind things down and 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 discuss where we think the Rockies are going to be on opening day. Let's 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 we talk big picture. We kind of talked big philosophy. Let's let's bring it back down and let's focus on the Rockies' plan for spring and opening day 
and things of that nature here in just a moment. Before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. Hey, the weather is slowly going to get better here soon, but there's plenty of adventures to be had outside or on the go. You're probably going to 17 million sports events. If Maybe you're getting ready to go to spring training or something like that. And you want to bring something that's going to be tasty, but ain't going to pack on all the unnecessary kind of fats and sugars that some things happen, uh, you know, that you'll tend to eat and snack on when you go on so many adventures. Built Bar's got you covered because not only are they covered in 100% real chocolate with amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond, their macros are sitting at 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. You can see the macros for yourself. You can see all the flavors, and you can see so much more at built.com and guess what folks built.com is not the only place you can get your hands on a built bar anymore no 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 you can head to your local sam's club or walmart today and you can get yourself a box of the cookies and cream the double chocolate coconut puffs yeah that's right they even got the puffs there at your local sam's club or Walmart. I know you guys like those marshmallowy puffs. So if you're close to Sam's Club, Walmart, or even just your computer, you can head to built.com or Sam's Club or Walmart and grab you a delicious box of built bars. And you can and thank me later. Locked on Rockies here on the Locked On MLB. <laughs> I just completely flipped. Hey, cookies and cream is your fave, Lux Ace. Love to hear that. I just completely flipped my uh, little <laughs> comeback intro uh, segment there. I meant to say thank you for making Locked On Rockies listening. Uh, it's your first listen of the day. You're listening here on the Locked On Podcast Network. You can make Locked On MLB Prospects your second listen of the day. Locked On MLB Prospects is here in the chat as well preaching the love to play a Larice Montero and uh, our friend Lindsey Crosby has joined us multiple times on the show. If you want to talk more and actually just what was it last week? Is it two weeks ago? Very recently, earlier this month in February, uh, locked on MLB prospects dove into the farm system of the Colorado Rockies. So if you want to learn more uh, about where the Rockies are at and uh, the new up and coming, I'm going to say the new hot uh, farm system in town. The Colorado Rockies, two weeks ago, you can go check that out on uh, the Locked On MLB Prospects feed. So let's let's uh, center things small, small scale. We've been talking about third base, big picture, big philosophy stuff throughout the episode. But where do I think the Rockies end up on opening day? I think the answer is pretty obvious. Ryan McMahon is the starting third baseman for the Colorado Rockies. This isn't going to change throughout spring training, but I think we're going to see a ton of Montero in spring training. I think you're uh, Montero should just play as much as possible, gear up, ready to go. And I think we're going to see Montero find his way into interesting spots in the lineup. And I really do think the Rockies are going to start making CJ Crone more of a DH. I think first base is going to turn into more of a spot for the Rockies to play their, uh, their prospects, including Montero. Montero has been getting work. At uh, um, uh, first base so far in the first three days of spring, I know, I know that's not much, but still, it's he he is working on first base. He's worked at first base. He's played first base before. Uh, I know third base is better for him, but again, I think the more likely situation for the Rockies before they start sending people away in terms of trades is making things, uh, is utilizing first base for your DH. And Luxe says, Charlie DH, though, with Gritchick going down, like I said, I think we're going to see more Charlie in right field than we expected. So you're going to use this time to kind of take that opening in the outfield and use that for some of those other prospects, I think, as well, the ones that make the Rockies Major League camp. Uh, but... The, the that will open up a little bit more opportunity for the Rockies to find a spot to get Montero playing time early in the, in the year. Because again, one of the, I think the biggest mistakes the Rockies can make this year is not get Montero consistent, good playing time early in the season. Montero needs to go in. Maybe he's a utility. Maybe he's not starting, but Montero needs to be playing three games a week. What DH 
third baseman, uh, first base. Montero needs to be in the ball game at least three games a week. He needs to be. He cannot be sitting on the bench ice cold for the start of the season. He it just simply it will be unexplainable. So I think with the Rockies having a little bit of depth, moving things around, they are going to use that because, uh, uh, mind you, the other thing is I think Chris Bryant's going to get time at DH as well, and I think that's going to make the Rockies do a little bit more with their defense and clear up some things. I think the Rockies are going to utilize DH as kind of an off day for their uh, for their veteran players to keep them in the lineup and keep their bats in the lineup because the Rockies really need to... I mean, when you really look about it, the Rockies' most impactful offensive weapons right now are all their veteran players. That includes Bryant, that includes McMahon, uh, that includes Crone, and that includes Blackman. So they all, I think, uh, I think those four really are going to be uh, playing a ton of DH and rotating in there, Montero as well. Um, but that, that's another thing. The Rockies will use the DH as an off day, quote unquote, to free up for their other players because you can, you know, those guys can hit. So why not let Crone take a day at take a day off first base, Montero get in the lineup and Crone still swinging, uh, you know, swings it. So I think the Rockies need, need to be very creative with the way they use the DH and honestly, this opening that Randall Gritchick's absence is going to make with the way they handle the early season for their prospects. Because the other thing is, how many of them are actually going to break camp with the Rockies? How many are going to be up there on opening day? Montero is going to be one of the ones that is up with the Rockies on opening day. And same probably with Bouchard and Tolia, I would imagine, but maybe not all four are going to be up. But you know Tovar is going to be the shortstop, and you know Montero is going to be there. Uh, so I think that that's going to be something uh, to watch as well. But so what is the state of third base? It's kind of weird, but right now the Colorado Rockies are certainly going to be sticking with Ryan McMahon as their everyday third baseman and how they utilize uh, Aloris Montero. We're going to see. I think they are going to have to get creative with it. It is possible that they will, but folks, that is going to do it. Man, we had a lot to talk about today. We had a huge live chat as well. Holy smokes. We had Brandon Kramer in here as well. Uh, talking. I'm sorry if I didn't get to any of the uh, all the comments because there were so many today, but that's what we like to see. We are really in full steam ahead, gearing up for another season of Rockies baseball. Uh, so you can find us here on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. You can be part of the live chat just like so many were today. Answer your questions. Uh, get, I will answer your questions live as I get to them or uh, hopefully as I get to them here. And sometimes you get great fantasy baseball advice here from Locked On MLB Prospects uh, in the live chat. We've now had Locked On MLB Prospects and Locked On Yankees in the live chat lately. So thanks to them for tuning in. And thanks to you all for tuning in as well. That's right, Brandon. Or Brandon, the grass, I can smell it too. It's a coming. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Hey, and uh, folks, if you didn't know this, I, I, I do want to give this a quick shout out because this, I think, broke over the weekend. And this relates to our man at MLB Prospects as well. If you subscribe to MLB TV, you get minor league baseball this year. So if you want to be uh, follow some more prospects, if you want to see more uh, about the future of the Rockies or other teams, it just got a lot easier to watch minor league teams uh, that is now included with your MLB TV subscription. Uh, so something to watch for here, especially with the Rockies uh, th with them. So uh, <laughs> Brandon making me laugh there, but uh, anyway, folks, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Why don't you go make locked on MLB prospects, your second listen of the day. And you can also find the locked on Broncos locked on avalanche locked on nuggets. And now the locked on buffs podcast for your Colorado sports coverage. But we got you covered all Rocky season long right here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.